Welcome friends, Last Scarf here, and it's time for a Twitch vlog. So check out my shirt. Got this from Yeti. Yeah, look at that. That's a good shirt. Okay, so we're just gonna talk about TwitchCon really fast just so I get this out there. TwitchCon was pretty fun for a lot of different reasons and not so great in other reasons. So first thing to talk about is when I first got there, I only came on Saturday. When I first got there, that's why you see it today, Sunday and all that. But I got there on Saturday, checked out some panels in the morning. And they were really helpful. They were good panels. They're talking about branding. They were talking about just things you can do to get better at streaming. Talking about mental health. That was that was a really good one. Is talking about um, not letting the numbers get to you and uh, just mental health stuff. Just how a lot of streamers just get really depressed and sad and stuff like that because they just want to be liked more or they just want to reach more people and stuff like that. And they just don't. And it's very unfortunate. It was like Bro Tato was there, Tiger Rider. Uh, Scarlet Rose, I can't remember the other one, uh, Eddie something. And what's great about all these panels that I saw, they're all on Twitch, so you can watch them and you can learn from them, or you can just see information, just very, uh, interesting stuff you can learn about people watching that. That's really good right there, and I thought it was really good, and there's plenty of things I could watch and learn from for sure, I'm, I'm gonna do that for sure, uh, coming up. After some panels, I went to the floor. Expo Floor, a lot of different games to play. They had Nidhogg 2, there was Tail and Tooth, uh, Tooth and Tail. There was Shadow Warrior 2, which looks great. That, that looks really good. Uh, just a lot of different games to play. Talk to some devs. Vermintide's coming to console, I didn't know. So I talked to Fat Shark, got in contact with them. I uh, talked to their PR guy, he said, send me an email. So I asked him about uh, talking to devs and PR as a, as a streamer, as a YouTuber. And they said, just talk to us. and. And a, a character goes a long way. Just even talking to us goes a long way. Just make sure we know you're a real person and stuff like that. And you're not just begging for codes, but you, you want to have a relationship kind of thing going on there. So that was really good information. And I got some cards from different devs and that's really good. So I can email them, talk to them and get out there and stuff like that. And there were just some interesting games and stuff. It was pretty cool. And the highlight of the day... um, as far as the con goes, it's got to be, I got to meet Jesse Cox. That is the nicest guy you'll ever meet. He's really funny. He's, Jesse Cox is amazing. He's just an amazing guy. I met him three years ago and I meet him now and he's just still funny. He's just, he's sharp as ever. And it's just, just so fun to talk to him. And what was nice is I, I find him like, he's just, he just went to the Alienware booth and he just was just going to hang out there for an hour just to be there. And people could just talk to him if they want to. And so a crowd shows up, people are just talking to him. Like, like five, six people, I call that crowd. But just a couple people show up, and at one time, everyone's just asking him questions. He's just talking to them. And he's just asking, like, how's your con? How you doing? Stuff like that. Like, Jesse's questions are just, you having fun, this and that. And if you're not having fun, how can I make your day better? That's Jesse, and that's really nice. But people are asking questions like, how do you deal with people with the ego? And it's like, well, they're just going to have the ego. And you just don't let it get to you and stuff like that. And just, just nice conversation with Jesse Cox. When I talk, when I talked to him, I mentioned I saw him three years ago, and and just talking about just the channel and everything. And I said like the influence for me was him and TB. And what's funny is Jesse went, "Oh, well, you had me until you mentioned TB." <laughs> He's like, "I hate that guy. That guy sucks. I hate that guy." You can quote me that I hate that TB is the worst person on Twitter. And and he went like, and he said like TB would be like that little bitch. And just said he'd be like, oh, I'm sorry, TB, I'm sorry, babe, I'm sorry. Which cracked me up. And Jesse's just funny, and he was just constantly funny the whole time. Just watching him answer other people's questions and him answering my questions, it was nice. Took a picture with him, which was awesome. And just, he was just saying, um, don't, don't let your views get to you, don't let your numbers get to you. Like, you're saying the same thing, because... You're always going to want more every time you hit another milestone, you're going to want more. You're going to think, why am I not this high yet? Why am I not this big number yet? Why am I not there yet? And just don't let it get to you. Just do your work, make it fun, make it great, and you'll do, you'll do all right. You'll just, just keep improving. That's what's important. And have fun with it. If you're not having fun with it, it's not going to be worth doing. And I also asked him if we were making too many videos. And, he's, and I told him we make like two videos a day. He's like, oh, that's, that's pretty good because he struggles to make even one video a day sometimes just because of whatever other projects he has. And so, so that's pretty good. Just, you know, I asked, can you make too many? He says, well, if you're working yourself to death in too many, but you, but as long as you're just making content, you're entertaining people, that's what's important. That's what I got from him. And so that was great. And he said, check back with him again in the future. Just 
so he sees how I'm doing. And so that was pretty cool. Very nice, very personal, and really nice. Just a stronger opinion of Jesse Cox. I really liked meeting him. I didn't get a chance to meet Dodger or Strip and who are other people I like. Because uh, just didn't have a chance to meet them. But I did meet Jesse Cox, and I'm happy for it. I think I'm all the better for it. After that, I got to run into Mez. And me and Mez hung out for essentially 12 hours. We played Breakaway, which is a new game, and we had fun with that. And it's like MOBA plus Rocket League, where you're, you have MOBA abilities, and you're just 4v4ing, and you're trying to get the ball in the goal kind of thing. Just fighting each other for that. Pretty fun. Mez introduced me to a bunch of... Uh, hardware companies that I didn't know about, and, and Twitch teams, like, I didn't know about those either. He introduced me to Mionix, he in introduced me to Corsair, just things like that, because I didn't, like, hardware is something I don't really know. Like, Mez was doing networking and stuff, and trying to get sponsorships. Me, I don't really know uh, tech, so I'm not really talking to them all that much. But he introduced me to them and had me do sign-ups with them and stuff, and we'll see if that goes anywhere. Like, you've got to get yourself out there, of course, if you want to be successful. And I don't really get myself out there as much, but I got to really try. And going to TwitchCon was helpful for that. I feel like I really need to make more effort on that. So that's going to happen. I did ask Jesse Cox, is it still important to advertise like a shameless whore? Because that was his thing for years. And he says, at this point, not as much because everyone's being a shameless whore already. So it's saturated. So it's more, you just got to find what works for you and be really good at it to get noticed. Was my understanding from what he was telling me. But that, Shameless whoring, it worked back then, but it doesn't work as well now, because there's just, everyone's a whore. <laughs> there's just a ton of them now. And so just hung out with Mez, checked out Corsair, checked out Amazon. Oh, we got the, we went to Twitch Prime, and oh god, I gotta get that. Be right back. You guys want more Smite, right? Check this out. I got a hat, and it covers my eyebrows. Okay, that's way too low. There we go. Hey, so Scarf's got a new hat, and it's uh, the Japanese hat, right? Japanese Pantheon for uh, Smite. We don't play Smite anymore, but there you go. Got a hat. That was pretty nice. We met Hi-Rez Amanda, Hi-Rez uh, Ugly Cat Lady. Um, I saw Todd. I saw Nabil. I didn't get to talk to him because they don't know who the hell I am. Didn't get to talk to him. Um, other Hi-Rez people. I saw Weekend was there. I saw Allied was there. I saw DM was there. Um, there were a bunch of DM's crew were there. Um, yeah, and they were doing Smite, doing Paladins. I played Ching Shen's, uh Challenge Mountain thing. That was a thing. That was interesting. Um, and yeah, I got a hat. We got a hat. So we'll see if I wear that. It's, it is, it is really, really pastel. Holy crap. Um, so we went to a concert and it was uh, T-Pain and it was Steve Aoki. Which, uh, T-Pain wasn't the best, and then Steve Aoki was apparently was, you know, amazing. Um, we hung out, saw the concert, just hung out. It was just me and Miz just hanging out and having fun and making jokes and laughing a lot. And it's like, why haven't we played a game together? And there's, it's just because we just haven't been playing games together, so we should play together again in the future. So, we'll look into playing together again in the future, and stuff like that. And we even talked about a bridging, which would be fun. Uh, but... Oh my god, every time I did a voice, Mez just did a better voice. Like, I'm outclassed. Like, Mez has been at this a lot longer than me, but damn, I'm outclassed when it comes to voices. He's just so much better. So much better. Holy crap. Dude can do Mark Hamill perfectly. The Joker? That was amazing. It was amazing how well he does Mark Hamill's Joker. And he was even doing Jared Leto's Joker. Mez is good. Mez is too damn good. He's really good. He's just outclassing me. I was having fun doing voices with him, but damn, he's outclassing my ass. He's just better. One last thing to talk about, which I got to give feedback to TwitchCon, is there was a lot of segregation there. It was very unfortunate, and it was upsetting a lot of people, even Mez. It upset a lot. Mez is a partner, but he got special treatment, and a couple other people. If you're a partner, you got special treatment. If you're just a regular person, no special treatment, of course. And the way a lot of people saw was this is uh, ego stroking. Way too much ego stroking, in opinion. In that there were special places only for streamers. Um, not streamers, but only for the VIPs. Only for partners. Like, Partners get this access to this. They get th this is a special special spot only for the partners. There were a lot of things like that, and even at the concert, there's a white picket fence up to the freaking stage where only VIPs could be. So they had their own spot to just see the concert. They had their own glass box room with a bar to see the concert. It was really silly. It was it's all this segregation. Like 
like what we said was we get if there was like a special room for streamers and for the big guys to be away from the fans so they don't get bombarded. We got that. Like just special rooms where they could just get away from everyone. But the fact it was just right there on the field at the concert, this freaking segregation, this glass box, like just they're just separated by a white picket fence. It was really, really not good. The segregation going on there, even the segregation at the con itself was not a good thing. Way too much ego stroke and just saying, you're special. You're, you're a special person. There was way too much of that. And even Mez, who was a partner, was upset by that. He did not like that at all. And so I didn't know anyone who liked the VIP treatment. Because that just, it's a community thing. Twitch comes about community. And it was segregating the community. It didn't make any damn sense. It was really weird. Very unfortunate. Just, I don't, I don't get it. Like, it's, TwitchCon's supposed to be about community, and it was the opposite with how they do things, which is very unfortunate. I enjoyed a lot of things, but that right there did stick out every now and then that they're doing something like that, and it's just very odd, and very disappointing, and just not good. And, uh, ending on a more positive note, yeah, just do more things with Mez. We'll, we should see me and Mez more together in the future, we'll see. But there you go, that right there is the quick vlog right there just talking about TwitchCon. I enjoyed it for the most part. And there's a lot to learn from there and makes me want to get more out there. And it really makes me want to see PAX someday because I know it's nothing but games. So I can do a bunch of games and just talk to devs all day and just that would be so fun. And someday, someday that'll happen. There you go. That right there is the vlog for now. I had fun watching. That's what's all about, isn't it? Having fun likes come by and see you next time.